first time I played this title was not on the Sega CD, but was in fact on the Sega 32X. I thought the idea was interesting, and the gameplay was fun enough for a 30 minute or so session. I ended up finally playing the Sega CD version recently, so I decided to go ahead and do a quick review. <laughs> Developed and published by Core Designs in 1994, BC Racers is best described as a kart racer, mostly akin to F-Zero on the Super Nintendo, or the Sega arcade masterpiece Power Drift. In addition, there is also a basic combat mechanic added in a la Road Rash, and the whole thing is set in the Chuck Rock universe, initially being titled Chuck Rally Rocky Racers. Mix all that together and there you have it, BC Racers. First, let's highlight the tracks that you will be competing on. BC Racers is set up with four circuits and eight races on eight tracks per circuit. Instead of relying on creative naming convention for each circuit, they are simply just titled as a difficulty level. So you have easy, medium, hard, and finally rock hard. As such, to a casual player who has played this game, you may have never even known that there are 32 different tracks on this game. Now for clarification, it's not 32 entirely different environments to race on, but each circuit has eight track themes, and then there are four different variations of the eight different themed environments to race on that are optimized and match the difficulty selected. The eight environments are Rock City Race, Night Rally, Desert Drive, Jungle Rumble, Swamp Stomp, Blizzard Blitz, Cave Rave, and Volcano Dash. The story is about as simple as you can expect a 16-bit kart racer to be. According to the back cover, millionaire playboy caveman Millstone Rockefeller arranges a wild and wacky bike race, the winner of which receives the ultimate Boulder Dash bike. Cliffface has had his sunglasses set on a Boulder Dash bike since he was knee-high to a baby Diplodocus, so he signs up for the race, taking his cave babe Roxy along for the ride. So essentially a rich dude holds a race, the prize is a super expensive motorcycle, and so you're entering hoping to win the prize. And like the synopsis reads, you actually race on a motorcycle with a sidecar, and a passenger rides along with you for the whole event. There are eight racers to choose from, and each duo has a list of stats that will give you an idea of where the team excels at. Maybe acceleration is what you want? Or maybe instead you want attack power. After scrolling through, you lock in your selection, and that is your driver for the remainder of that circuit. Graphic design was assumed by Toby Gard, and for game design, he was joined with Dan Scott and Guy Miller. Before researching this, I'd had never particularly noticed a name Toby Gard before, but apparently he was the guy who conceptualized, designed, and animated the original Lara Croft in Tomb Raider. And I also wasn't aware until the research of this video that Tomb Raider was a core designs game. So they had some success with Sega CD and some other platforms, but Tomb Raider was the game that really put them on the map. Accolades aside, with BC Racers, I didn't think the design was really out of this world, but the levels all had a fun theme and the drivers also had a cohesive themes as well, so it all worked well together and still conveyed what the artist intended. So with that being said, I feel the graphics and design and themes were all decently serviceable enough. There were some pretty cool rotation effects going on, and I would assume that that's thanks to the advanced Sega CD hardware, since there was never a version release on the base Genesis, which further drives home the point that the Sega CD was conceptualized to compete with the Mode 7 rendering of the Super Nintendo, and it's sad that they didn't really lean full throttle into that. All music and sound effects were handled by Martin Iveson, who apparently is a Core Designs parallel to Spencer Nielsen. Iveson has contributed the sound design to every single Core game on the Sega CD, in addition to other sound elements on other Core games as well. There are a few very standout cuts on the music for this entry. And of course, since it's the Sega CD version, we have these tracks and wonderful Red Book audio. I was expecting the sound effects to be the typical garbled sound effects we see from the Sega 16-bit line, but there are only a few sound effects to begin with, and they are all clean and well presented. As an aside, that's not to say the Genesis sound chip is bad, it is quite phenomenal. But where modulated melodies and heavy beats are its strengths, grunts, screams, and crashes, to my ears anyway, are usually horribly rendered. <laughs> 
All in all, for a 16-bit racer, it's actually not half bad. There was enough variety and enough challenge that encouraged me to keep playing and trying to reach the end. And even as far as the Sega CD goes, this title is definitely on the more fun side of racers out of the few racing games in the library. Again, you can't really go wrong with a quick 30 minute play session of BC Racers. Just make sure you have a six button controller handy and a can of Surge and you'll be good to go.